Welcome back to the Nerven channel. Today I'm going to review the SV Bony. This is their 102 millimeter ED doublet. Now SV Bony makes three of these soaps. They make a 70 millimeter version, an 80 millimeter version, which is pretty popular, and then they also make a 102 millimeter version. Now, a lot of astrophotographers have quickly glanced over these scopes thinking that because they're an ED doublet and they only use FL51 glass instead of the higher quality and more expensive FL53, they, with the thinking that, you know, they're not good enough for astrophotography. And I'm going to tell you that that's certainly not true. There are actually a lot of different applications that these scopes are good for. There's only one area in which they suffer a little bit, and that is when shooting broadband with completely unfiltered imaging. And that doesn't really affect a lot of people since the majority of you live in the city, and you're going to be using light pollution filters anyways. The lens cap. Ugh that it comes with, <laughs> it's aluminum. It goes on pretty good, okay? And it doesn't come off easily. I haven't dropped this thing yet, yet, okay? And it's a nice touch, okay? It's aluminum. I like the dew shield. It's longer than most, which is good. I, I think most dew shields are too short. One thing I like about this, and this is a nice little touch, is that for the majority of its travel, it's pretty easy, but then when you get to the very end, it kind of snugs up a little bit, which is nice because you don't have to worry about it falling back on you. Now, some of their, their new high-end, the 550 series, has a little tension knob here, which is kind of a nice added feature that this one does lack. This is a white scope. I like the fact that it's white. I don't like black scopes. Why? Well, I tend to run into black scopes at night. You can't see them, okay? And if you're in the middle of an imaging session and you bump your scope, sometimes you gotta start all over again, all right? Here's a little thing that I like, and that's with the rings, the knobs that are used to loosen and of course release them are very nice. They are big, they're easy to find in the dark. I like that. They're all hollowed out, which means that they're not a lot of weight. And also, here's something else, okay? so. A lot of people, they rotate the camera at the focuser, okay? Which this camera does have a focuser rotating mechanism, right? That's nice. And there's actually two different ways you can rotate there in the back. We'll talk about more in a minute. But I prefer to rotate the entire optical system, and I'll tell you why. And that's because it means I don't have to redo flats. Less work is always better in this area, folks. You know, calibration frames are complicated enough as it is. I know my calibration library is in the hundreds of gigabytes, all right? So yeah, I like the fact that these knobs are big and they are quite easy to find in the dark so that I can rotate the entire assembly should I need to, you know, for composing the image in one way or another. Of course, the rings are also felt lined, which is obviously a nice benefit. And on the top of the rings, okay, you have Looks like they're all the same threading, but there's there's five screw holes in the tops of each ring, which is nice. It gives you plenty of options. As you can see, I milled an aluminum rail here to hold my guide scope. And, and this, by the way, is kind of the only emission that a lot of people complain a little bit about, and that's that there's no guide scope adopter down here. And eh, I don't know, I'm kind of neutral about it. I mean, really, it's an, it's, it's not an issue for me, let's put it that way. I like to mount my guide scopes further forward and I'm not way, way back here. With a lot of systems I find myself, uh, with all the weight and everything, it's way back here. I push the scope basically beyond the clamping position of the actual Vixen rail, uh, which is not a nice thing. And that's why I put my guide scope up front. Now, talking about the focus rotator, it's kind of like the Sharp Star. There's basically three brass slotted screws, which you would want to loosen them or adjust them. Basically, if maybe it was a little bit off-centered, like let's say your image circle was a little bit off-centered. Now, I found that this guy was dead on, okay, from the factory, which again, I'm going to praise whoever it is is putting the, the focusers together on these scopes. They're doing a really good job. There is a thumb screw right here. If you do need to rotate the entire focuser. And then of course, the focal reducer that this scope comes with or that you can buy it with can rotate in the two inch eyepiece mechanism that's back here at the back of the focuser. The focuser has plenty of travel. Also, the focuser is pre-tapped and everything 
to basically add a ZWEAF, which in my opinion, an autofocuser is really essential these days. Even with a one shot color camera that I only focus one time, uh, depending on how many temperature swings I have throughout the night. Yeah, I just find these things are just so essential. It's uh, who on earth would ever buy a cell phone that was manual focus, you know, the camera that was manual focus. You would never do that, you know. The same thing with astrophotography. I think an autofocuser is just essential. And then of course there is the focal reducer itself. The focal reducer is a three element design and is designed specifically for the scope and it does an excellent job. Stars are nice and tack round and sharp all the way out to the edges of my four thirds cameras, both my one shot color, this DSLR here, and also my mono cameras. So yeah, I've had no plaints whatsoever with the focal reducer. I think it's a nice design. Well, except for the fact that it goes into a two inch eyepiece, I would kind of prefer that it, it was threaded in. That's just me, that's a more secure connection. However, considering the weight that I have on this thing, you know, I'm not trying to throw a 35 millimeter sensor on here. So this is plenty, okay, it is enough. If you were to try this thing with a, maybe like a larger format sensor, those of you who are going to use this with an APS-C sensor, you are gonna have a little bit of vignetting. It's not too bad. It'll calibrate out with flats, okay? 35 millimeter sensor, no way you're gonna be able to do that. Uh, you're just gonna have too much vignetting. Now, for those of you that are just getting into astrophotography though, which one of the three sizes would I probably recommend? That would be the 70 millimeter. The 70 millimeter seems like it would be the easiest one to start with. Really a scope this big, although it's not terribly large, I have bigger scopes than this. It is quite a bit to manage. And so I wouldn't recommend a 102 for somebody who's just starting out. But somebody in the beginning stages, their 70 millimeter and the 80 millimeter are certainly better choices. Why? Because when things are smaller, at least your equipment smaller, things are easier. And that's something that I think a lot of people glance over. But that being said, okay, this is more of a scope for the more advanced people. You know, mainly guys shooting narrow band, and that's really where this thing comes out strong. And yes, I have an Acromat that has the same focal length as this guy, and it's actually a little bit faster. It's a 120 millimeter objective instead of the 102 that this guy is. Yet this guy is going to find a place in my portfolio because when I'm shooting targets with, let's say a really, really pesky bright star in it, this is the one that I'll get out. Why? Well, because it controls that big star quite a bit better than a simple Acromat does. Now, yes, yes, I know I've preached that narrowband filters, you know, they make chromatic aberrations basically a non-issue, but for the sake of like the really bright stars, this is the one that I break out. Now, at the moment though, I actually have this set up with my Olympus OM-1, which I am not using any filtration with, and I will show you an image now of the Andromeda Galaxy that I took in my brand new backyard. Okay, yes, we've just moved into the country. I'm now under a Bortle 4 sky, and it's a pretty good Bortle 4 sky. But yes, Andromeda, there are some chromatic aberrations around the brighter stars. And mainly it's the blue stars, okay? Yellow stars still appear to be yellow in the scope, which is kind of surprising. And it's actually good news for those of you that want to use this scope unfiltered because yes, you can do it. You can totally do broadband imaging with this scope. It, it'll work, okay? Now, I did notice that I lost a little bit of color in Andromeda when I got rid of the chromatic aberrations. But I gotta say, like getting rid of chromatic aberrations, it's one of the easiest optical flaws to compensate for in post-processing. It was actually just one button click and it was gone. So one of the aspirations that I had when I bought this scope and I was kind of testing it out to see if I could do this. I make these side-by-side -side lost mini plates which allow me to put two scopes on one tripod and or one mount. And this guy, the cost of this, I can buy two of these for the cost of one triplet scope which in an ideal world, that means that I could buy two identical mono cameras 
and set them up with the same filters and so forth and collect twice as much data. Or I could probably capture a narrowband object in a single night. So I am deserting this plan for now. I'm not going to do a double side-by-side -side setup mainly because I want a newer camera and also I need a bigger mount. I found that Two of these mounted on here would just be too much weight for my mount. And I'm actually kind of already at the limit. I've had this thing actually at a little bit of past the limit, but this iOptron has tracked really awesome, which is a testament to it. And it's why when I go shopping for a bigger mount, I'm gonna buy an iOptron. But maybe keep that in mind. Yeah, you could do two side-by-side -side mounts, which of course would mean twice as much data. And everybody wants twice as much data, trust me. There's never enough data in this hobby. In summary, probably the most important thing is the optics, not an astrophotography. We're, we're optic snobs, okay? Well, let's just be simple about it. If this was a camera lens or a daytime astrophotography piece of equipment, I think just about any company out there would brag about insane optics. Now, SV Bunny doesn't, but these optics are still good and they totally work for just about everything that I do. And like I said, it. It has an, a nice spot in my astrophotography portfolio of scopes, which is kind of ever growing. It's a sickness, I tell you. For those of you doing one shot color work, it is easy to process out. It does mean that your stars are a little bit bigger, okay? But like I said, it processes it out. It's actually really easy to do. Now, for those of you who are more advanced and you're probably using a mono camera, well, guess what? It's really a non-issue. It's, it's really completely a non-issue for those of you using a mono camera because we're shooting one color at a time and we focus for each one. And therefore, what chromatic aberrations are that are there are really, they're, they're non-existent. They don't really show up afterwards. And especially for those of us shooting narrowband like myself, well, guess what? Yeah, completely not an issue. Now, if you're using light pollution filters, even the multi-spectra broadband light pollution filters will actually tame the chromatic aberrations in this significantly. And like I said, it may be a complete non-issue for you. So hope that sums up everything for you and you kind of understand what you're getting into with this scope because it is a fun scope to use. I'd say it is actually a really good value. And for those of you looking for maybe like a dual scope setup, that'd be a really good one to try. Yeah. And it's, it's really it's the perfect scope for narrowband imaging. It's gonna be a clear night tonight. I'm gonna set up now and actually do some imaging. Hope you enjoy, folks.